Grids were finally introduced into Figma in Config 2025. Let's have a look at how they work and how we can use them. As usual, there is a link in the description for a Figma file if you want to follow along. Let's jump in. First things first, how do we even add grids? Now grids were introduced as a new layout to Figma and the whole interface for the kind of layer section has changed. So if we add in a frame, just clicking on F and putting a frame inside, we'll see that in the design panel under layout, we now have all of these crazy boxes. Basically every frame that we put in is now free form. Then if we want to add a vertical or a horizontal layout, just like a normal auto layout, then we click on these. And if we want a grid, we click on this guy, yeah? And straight away, you'll see that we get these lines on the canvas. So you can see these blue lines telling me where the grid already is. The default grid, similar to the default auto layout, it will have 10 pixels of gap between the elements, but we can remove those if we want. I'm just gonna click on zero and zero, and then you see that it's a two by two grid. Now, if I wanna change this to be a bigger grid, I can click on this element over here and then just drag to create how many I want. Now you'll notice that the size of the frame stays always. So just because we add more columns or rows into our grid does not mean that our frame will change size. So for example, now I have 12 by 8 but if I grab my frame and make it bigger then the grid will expand automatically with my frame now how do I add items into my grid so I can just grab let's say this image over here and just drag it in and you'll see as I'm hovering over my grid different sections are being highlighted and this is really important and we'll get into this a bit later but wherever it's highlighted that's where it's going to go so let's say here in the top left it's gone there yeah, and because it knew that it was long, it, it automatically spanned itself across two rows. And you'll see here at the bottom, it says one by two because it's one column, two rows. I can bring it back and snap it into there if I want. So I can drag them one by one. I can also, let's say I grab this image, I copy, command C, click on my grid and command V. It will paste it into the next available space. But what I can also do, I can just grab all of these images, even though they're stacked on top of each other and just drop them in, yeah? And you'll see that it will also highlight kind of where they're going to be going. It did span some of them and some of them it didn't. I think it's still a tiny bit buggy at this point, but it's pretty cool still that it just drops them in for you just like that. And once they're in there, I can move them around. So I can put this one here, for example, or you see that like in here, there is no space, right? But you can see that blue line being highlighted. So it's telling me if you put it here, I'm gonna push the others to a different space. What's really amazing about this grid is that it helps us become really, really responsive. So if I select my grid now, if I move to the right or to the left, you see I'm kind of shrinking it or bringing it to be bigger or smaller. You see that all the elements inside are moving with me. And if I can, I can even pull this from the corner just to show you that everything is kind of growing, shrinking, and it's, it's just amazing. With the resizing, there's also a few things to keep in mind. So for example, this image over here, you can see that in the width and height, they are grayed out and it's set to fill. You might be familiar with this from other auto layouts, but if I set it to fixed, for example, then when I make this bigger or smaller, it won't actually grow with me. You see that even we can see the guideline here grow, but the image inside is not growing. So we need to make sure that we're keeping this what we want it to be. So if I select this image, for example, and on the height, I tell it to fill container, the width is in fill container, it's set to fixed. Now when I move it around, you see that the height is changing and being super dynamic, but the width isn't. Yeah. Now we also have the aspect ratio to think about. Let's say this image inside, it's set to fill and fill, and I'm going to tell it to lock the aspect ratio as well. So let's see, automatically, we've been told that the height is set to fixed for this item. Yeah. So it's telling us kind of, I can't do that. That's too much for me. So what that means is now when I move it around, you see what happens, kind of the aspect ratio of it is locked. So it's staying, I think kind of a bit of a, a square or something like that. It's never gonna grow too much. Let's bring this back to what it was. I'm gonna unlock and then make sure that both of them are set to fill. And let's look at it again. Yeah, you see, so now it's being super dynamic. You really need to think about what you're trying to get from this grid and play around with the mix of the fills, the lock rate, aspect ratio, and the fixed. Another thing that's important to remember when adding images into the grid is where you're placing them is going to determine whether they get resized or not. For example, I've got this image and it's kind of a big image, right? If I hover over the grid and I place it here, for example, you'll see that it will take up four of those squares. But if I take it out for a second, I'm just commanding to bring it all the way out. If I place it here at the bottom, that's what will happen. So what you need to remember is Figma is basically going to take the element you're trying to drop in, align it to the top left 
of the block of the grid that you're trying to drop it into and then figure it out from there, yeah? So if I grab it over here and I'm taking it to the this, this point of the grid, it's looking at the top left and then it's saying, okay, I've got this amount of space. It's never going to expand itself outside of the grid bounds. So although I can go in and pull it, it's not gonna do that for me. It's gonna say, okay, I, I see what you're doing. This is what you want. I'm gonna fill up as much as I can, right? But if I put it, for example, on the right, remember, top left of that block, so kind of like this, it will only expand two down. It's not gonna expand the grid in order to find space for it. It's not gonna add a column for us, yeah? So it's really important to keep that in mind when you're adding elements into your grids. Let's look at the paddings and the gaps. So I select my grid here, it's a four by two. I see I have some spanning elements and some are just kind of within their boxes. So if I select my grid over here, I can add some padding. It's the same as you would with any auto layout. I'm just going to scrub to add some and you'll notice that there's a fill color. A grid is just an auto layout, is just a frame. So it can have properties of its own, can have effects, rounded corners, backgrounds, anything that you need it to have. You'll notice that the paddings are pushing everything inside like it would with any auto layout. Out, right and if I add the gaps in between you'll notice something very interesting so with the items inside of the grid that were not spanning across multiple rows or columns they kind of stayed standalone and those gaps and the paddings did squish them a little bit like with between these two but with the elements inside that were spanning across multiple columns in this example or rows in this example the gaps in the middle didn't really affect them you can you can see that they're still there you can see those faint guidelines but it didn't really change anything. It might have made them a bit wider or a bit less wide, but they stayed in that span. So even if, let's say, my gap between my rows gets really big, you see that this one isn't being affected. This one is being pushed down a little bit just because kind of that's the gap over here. But it's important to remember that the spanned ones will not be affected as much as the others. You saw this before when we put in the image, but when we drop something into a grid, it automatically resizes itself to fill the space of the grid but there are some exceptions to that rule. For example, I've got this vector shape here and if I drop it inside, it will kind of automatically expand itself. Now I can still come back in and resize it to be whatever size I want it to be. It doesn't have to be the same size as the grid, but what if I don't want that to happen originally? So there's a few ways around this. The first way is if I put it inside of a frame, so I just right click, put it in a frame, and then I'll select the item inside the frame, just selecting the, um, cloud and then I'll make sure that its constraints are to center center or left right or anything like that that won't allow it to change its shape. So basically not left right, not top bottom and not scale scale. Now once I drop the frame into here, the frame will expand but the item inside will not. Okay, and that means that I've protected it so it's the correct size. Then if I go ahead and remove it from the frame, so for example, I'll just ungroup it, which means take it out of the frame, the cloud is now original size that it was before it came in, and it's now just aligned itself to the top left of the grid. So if you wanna bring in items and you don't want them to resize, just bear in mind you might wanna put like a little layer of protection on top of them. There may be some shortcut that you can do this with that I'm missing, but from my exploration, this is the only way to protect things before bringing them in. Inside of a grid, we can also overlap items. So we've already seen that the items don't actually have to be the correct size of the grid. So you see these are overlapping the grid itself. So I'm gonna select this green one and just bring it like this, probably something like that. And then this one can be here and like that. But you see right now, the yellow and the red are above the green. What if I want the red to be below the green, for example? So it's all about the layers panel just like we know from normal stacking of items. So right now you can see that the red is in between the yellow and the green, but I can use my left square bracket to bring it all the way back. So you see now it's way at the bottom. So even if yellow, for example, was overlapping like this, you see that now it's like a red, green, yellow. And I can also bring the red all the way to the top using the right bracket. Ta-da, yeah. So you just need to play around again with the layers panel to figure out if you are overlapping things, who do you want to be stacked on top of who? Now let's look at how you can duplicate elements inside of a grid. So let's say I wanna add more of these squares. I'll select one of these orange squares and then Command D to duplicate. You'll see it's just duplicating kind of as it goes and it goes top left to bottom right. So it kind of goes in that snake. Now what will happen now, once I've filled up the grid, if I Command D again, it will just add another row. Yeah, so it will forever keep going. But if we do this for a few elements at a time, we need to be careful with our selection between copy paste and between duplication. 
So if I select this entire blue row at the top and I Command C, Command V, it's going to add it underneath. Same with any auto layer. But I'm going to Command Z to bring it back. If I duplicate Command D, this will happen. Okay, so it's almost adding it next to it. So both are fine. I don't think one is preferable over the other. Let's see what happens when we do it in a column. So if I select these three, Command C, Command V, it will add them underneath. If I Command D, it will add them underneath like this. So just remember this if you're trying to duplicate or copy items inside of your grid, that they will behave differently according to the shortcut that you use. Another cool thing to be aware of is we can move items inside of the grid really easily. So if I select all of these orange rows, I can grab them almost as one element and you can see that they're that's highlighting them like this. So I can move them, let's say, to this row or I can move them like in between the two to here, yeah? You might have to hold down command when you do this. So for example, you'll see now when I'm hovering, it will almost just push them down. But if I wanna put them in between, holding command, and then it places them in between. Now, when an element inside of the grid is smaller than, than the box of the grid, you can align it inside, which is pretty cool. So for example, I have this heart. I already know when I'm gonna drop it in, it's gonna go crazy. But let me bring it down to be smaller size heart. There we go. Now you see it lives inside of this grid. I can't actually move it to anywhere, but I can align it using the alignment tool. So right now it's aligned to the top left, but I can make it align to the right, to the bottom, to the center, wherever I need it to be. And that almost gives it a bit of a constraint. So now if I move my grid around, you'll see that it's sticking to where I aligned it to. So in this case, it's sticking to the right and to the center. Let's see what happens when we add an auto layout into our grid. So this is an auto layout just of a simple button. There's just some text and some padding. I've got a grid here of two by two with some padding and some gaps. Now, if I add this in here, Firstly, it maintained its size, which is fantastic for us, right? It means that we know that if we drop an auto layout in there, it's not gonna warp just because it's inside of a grid. This one is set to hug, but I can set it to fill container and then it will resize automatically with my grid. Just command Z to bring that back. With the auto layout, you can then align them like we did with our shape before to wherever you need them to be in their own grid box. We can also nest grids inside of grids. So I took this from the Figma playground file. This one is a grid, this card is a grid, and this card is a grid, and I'm gonna put them inside of another grid. Yeah, and the same rule applies that we saw with the images before. If I'll drop this one here, it will shrink it to, to make sure that it has enough space. So I'll put it, let's say on this one, I'll expand it like that. Then I'll put this card over here, and I'll expand it to this way and this way. Then I'll drop this one in here and expand that one like that yeah and then i can move this around and it's fully responsive and just it's just it's just so great isn't it now there might be situations we don't want all of the grid columns or rows to be exactly the same width so we can select them and resize them on their own so let's say i want the column where the butterfly is to be wider than the other columns so if i select my butterfly and make it wider that's not going to do it it's just making that specific shape wider but i want the whole column to go with me so when I select an element, the row and column that it's in will have a dot above them and beside them. And if I click on that, I'm now selecting the entire column. This is a bit similar to how tables work in FigJam. Now I can type in here whatever I want the width to be, but I can also just drag to make it wider. And you see that the width of the column is changing and therefore the elements inside of it as well. So this one was spanning, so it didn't really change, but this is now a bit smaller, this is a bit smaller, and this is wider. Yeah, so the others will shrink to accommodate for it becoming wider. The same thing is true for a row. So if I select this row, and let's say I'll just type something in, I'll type in 200, you see that now it's 200 in height and the elements inside of it will change. So this turtle is now 200 because it's filling that row. A grid is just an auto layout as we've been saying. So if I wanna add in an element into it that does not respect the auto layout's rules or the grid's rules, I still can use absolute position. Let's say I wanna add in this wildlife tag. If I drop it in, it will just warp everything we'll add in a row it's it's not what i want right so i'll command z and then while i'm dragging it in i'll hold down control control on a mac as well and i'm sort of invoking the absolute position once it's in you'll see in the in the layers panel as well that it has that absolute position symbol around it and i can control its x and y position so let's say i'll put it in the center of all of this and it's just like this nice little badge and it will stay there even if the grid kind of 
changes size, it will move with it. In all the demos during config, they did show some really cool things that you can do with grid. So let's have a look at some examples. So the first one I wanna show you is this calendar. So I've got a grid here and it's a seven by seven, so seven days of the week. Um, and I'm going to drop in firstly this day block. So I'll drop it into this row and then I'll duplicate it seven times, surprise, surprise. Then I'll take this date cell and put it into here and I'll just duplicate it. I know it's probably not gonna be too much, but I'd rather do too much than too little. And then oh, it's already asking me if I want to replace content. Yes, I do. Thank you, Figma AI. If you don't have that prompt, it does mean that you don't have AI enabled on your account yet. You can add yourself to the wait list, but I think it is slowly starting to get to everyone. So fingers crossed, you'll get it soon. And you see that it's replaced it brilliantly. Yeah, we don't sadly have so many days in a month. I will remove one of our rows as well. Just make this a bit smaller. And then I'll take this container and just select the ones I don't want. Paste to replace, so Command Shift R and just replace them with that container. And then I'll go in and just change these days. So it's zero one. Then if I tab, it does move me up because this one is going this way. So I'll go down, zero, two, tab, 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 tab. And I have a calendar, yep, so cool. Another amazing example that they showed was how you can use the grid but have things sticking out of it to make it a really, really nice gallery. This is a three by two grid and I'm going to add in these images. So let's say this one is here, but actually I want it to be aligned to the bottom and just stick to the top of it. And then I want this one to be, yeah, just like that, perfect. Then maybe this one should stick out on this end. This one might just be a square and then this one stick out probably a bit of both. Yeah, I will select my grid and remove the background and you see I've got this brilliantly shaped grid and it's so pretty and yet it's still in the grid format. So if I do move it around, you see that most of them are kind of sticking to it and changing around as I want them to. When I do start breaking the grid, for example, now this one, it's fixed on both the width and the height, which means that it will just stay as it is. Yes, it will move around so it won't clash with the others, but it won't resize at any point, yeah. So you need to be cautious when taking stuff out of the grid or into the grid and not using at least one of the grid's kind of fill points, but still, it's so beautiful. The last super cool thing that they did during one of the demos is create a sort of bitmap illustration. So I've got a grid here and inside the grid, there are frames inside every single grid and they're just empty frames um, with no fill color. And what I can do, I can just Select, let's say these two, I click on I for the eyedropper tool, and then just start, you know, creating a bit of maybe like this mountainy shape. Yeah, I'm just holding down shift while I select something like that. Then maybe here at the, these four plus those, and then the yellow, bit of a sun. Yeah, so you can do, that's a horrible sun, but you can you can do little little designs like that, which is just really fun. So grids are basically unlocking a lot of new crea creative ideas within Figma. And that's that, I hope you enjoyed. There is so much more to talk about with grids. I'm just getting started and I'm sure you are as well. Grids are such a crucial new feature in Figma and I'm sure we're gonna use them daily. I hope you enjoyed, please leave a comment below. Let me know how you're using grids and what else you're excited about with the new announcements. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you at the next one.